Hello, Zero K fans, and welcome to Natalie's of Dawn. I'm your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. We have some exhibition matches today. Probably not a huge amount again. I'm better than it was last week, but it's still... I don't want to get into too much detail, but the point is I don't really want to push anything. I'm not sore so much that I just want to prevent being sore in the future. Anyway, we have a match on Aurelian that I was requested last week. It is a ship versus hover match. Man on ship, Sparkles on hover. And starting out pretty quick, too. By the way, this is on 16... On 1.1612... Yeah, it's 1612. So, we are not going to be seeing the new Hunter model in this match. And, I mean, we'll see what we'll see what I can do. Because there's quite a few 1712 matches that have been played. Or 172? I think it's one of the new matches. 172. Yeah, there's quite a few 172 matches that have been played. And I will be casting one of those next. But it's not going to be a water based one. So, the Hunter model will come in time. But yeah, so if you see the old Hunter model, that's why. Although at this point, Manu primarily focusing on Cutters and Corsairs. Getting a lot of really quick harassment going on, too. It just... This is... Actually pretty clever. Managing to avoid the daggers well enough, so they're not really worrying too much about that. At the same time, Manu 12 doesn't really have any defenses in their main base that, at all. Or plans to... Okay, they have, they have the Lotus. That's, that's good. I at least have that. Urchins are coming up to help get rid of the Cutter, but the Corsair might be able to actually stop that from being a thing at all. Corsair coming in here, nothing is going to be contesting that. The Daggers can't really do much against it, so at this point, this Corsair is completely wrecking everything. At the same time, that means Mana 12 has all the room in the world to build up their main base. They're got another Mariner in the back, expanding a little bit, but that's at the same time as Sparkles is desperately trying to stop this Corsair from just wreaking havoc. Now, at the same time, Sparkles has intelligently expanded over to the north, so they have an extra 5 metal per second Manu doesn't even have. In fact, Sparkles right now, they're they are really healthy for economy. They lost one metal extractor, but they're still 3 metal per second ahead of Manu 12 just because of those metal extractors taken over in the corner that Manu just has not checked. And I can't blame Manu for not checking it. I mean, the main focus right now for Manu 12 is just to do as much damage as possible to the main base of the Corsairs. Once the next Corsair comes in, it's even better. And at the same time, Manu 12 is expanding in the back. They don't have to worry about this at all either because... They're not going to get attacked. Sparkles isn't going to try to split their base or split their force when their base is heavily under attack. So we're not going to be... We're not going to be seeing too much of an aggression on Manu 12 yet. So it looks like with the regroup here, that is giving Sparkles a little bit of confidence. And the Scalpel being up could be a bit of a problem. The Cutter should be able to get in and deal some damage. The Scalpel will at least force the Corsair to rethink exactly what it's doing. As it is not going to be surviving two shots and then it's going to be pretty well dead. There's only one cutter, too. It's not exactly easy for the cutter to get in and actually deal with the Corsair. Although, not the Corsair, I mean the, ah, what am I saying, Corsair Scalpel. Although, that was, oh, I thought, thought that would dodge it. Thought the cutter might be able to dodge the missiles, and clearly so did Manu 12, but no, that's not happening. However, Seawolf coming in here should be able to at least help, but I don't know if that's the best option at this point. I mean, the Corsairs are under heavy fire. The daggers can wipe out the Seawolf very quickly. The Seawolf only has, three, six, okay, 600 HP. It will take one whole volley from all the daggers to kill the Seawolf. So that Sea Wolf is dead. Like, that's the thing. The daggers are slightly out of position, mind you, so it's possible for the Corsairs to possibly get rid of them. But the Corsairs are a little bit too slow. And at this point, Mana 12 and Sparkles have just now evened up the economy. Sparkles being a little bit more efficient attrition wise, but really, it's going to come down to exactly how the units are placed and where. And right now, Sparkles, I still think, has the advantage if for no other reason than they have this northern expansion that's not been touched. And they're getting the Geothermal plant on top, though. I will admit that Geo plant. Probably low priority, or at least it can't be that high priority, just because most of the stuff is going to the main base. And actually, what is priority right now? No, priority is pretty even. It's just 15 metal per second going to the main base and only 5 going to the Geo plant. That's probably fine. I mean, Sparkles is still ahead economically, so they don't have to worry too much about getting overdrive with a Geo. I mean, it would be nice. It would do a lot to help. Because that is the best metal extractor to get the Geo on, and then you just from there, you can see already have the pylons set up. But, you know. Three minutes isn't going to be a big deal. Sparkles still has time to defend their base with that, and they're, they're still ahead economically. Then, no problems there. But these daggers are going to get themselves killed by the Corsairs. That was going in way too hard. I mean, I see why. Get those sea wolves, but it's not going to help out. And we also have a Mistral coming in. Yay for Mistrals! I think this is actually why the game was told, was given to me, or requested for me, or whatever. The link was shared with me, is because people actually use Mistrals this game. Of course, people are also using Claymores, and that. Oh, this is going to be cool. We're actually seeing pretty much a full-on hover versus ship battle. This, I've wanted to see this for a while. Like, I'm, this is pretty well developed, honestly. Like, just about every unit being used. Units being used as they should for countering what they need to. And Claymore doing its job, which is always kind of fun to see, because Claymore's, 
Clamors have a bit of a tendency to kill themselves or be otherwise a bit of a joke unit, especially on land, but when you get in water, it's just nice to see them really do their job. That being said, though, despite the Claymore in the back doing a lot of damage, this Mistral is doing a great job. Ooh, amazing job getting rid of the daggers. That was kind of rude. At the same time, the Claymore in Manu's base has been destroyed, dealt a bit of damage in the process, but honestly not that much. So right now, I'd say Manu 12 is considerably ahead. They are definitely ahead economically. They have a reasonable territory position. Sparkles right now, I'm not sure how they're going to get rid of this. This Corsair will go down to the daggers. Like, its time is limited. But it's going to take a lot before it does finally go down. This last dagger should finish it off. But... Like I said, it, it took out, what, 12, 13 daggers in the meantime? It got value. You could see on the little marks at the top, it got twice its value, cost and value. So it was definitely doing well for Manu 12. For, yeah, for Manu 12. Manu 12 winning on attrition. They're actually a little bit low right now on the economy. And Reclaim being in favor of Sparkles right now just because of this field here. And that field is worth about 500 metal. So, not bad. A minute and a half of a little bit of extra metal. Though Manu 12... At the same time, does have to deal with another Claymore, and does have to rebuild all this stuff here. Their Mariner already off in the north, so they're going to have to go back here in the southwest and rebuild. But at the same time, that Mariner really could reclaim right about now. Like, just get that metal. Especially as Sparkles has built up the Robotry. I guess Manu, not really realizing this, they are going for a similar idea of getting enough wind to, or tidal, rather, to get a decent amount of overdrive. But Manu 12 is nowhere near. They, I'm surprised they really haven't even taken this, this metal extractor over to the eastern side of the map. Like, three metal per second is not nothing. It's the most valuable metal extractor on that side of the map. Unless Manu expects that Sparkles is going to come around the back and take it out, but... Well, that's... I mean, it's possible. That's a fair expectation. It just seems kind of irrelevant. It's 3 metal per second. If it's alive for 20 seconds, it's good. And it really hasn't been attacked yet. At the same time, the Corsair's coming around the back. That is more important. Manu 12 able to get rid of basically all the economy up north. It's definitely wiping out a lot of the push towards Overdrive, or they're at least getting rid of some of the Overdrive fodder, but Sparkles right now... Between the Overdrive and the Reclaim, and just the fact that they have more Metal Extractors, mostly Overdrive and Reclaim, though, they are ahead of Manu 12 right now. They are considerably ahead of Manu 12 right now. Although, at the same time, it's just a matter of these Corsairs coming around the back. All they have to do is just go here and wipe everything out, and then it'll be fine. I mean, I can see Manu 12 definitely much more focused on taking care of the front line. And the Corsairs are doing a great job of doing that. It's just a matter of these Corsairs at the front. They are perfectly in position to help harass, and they could have easily wiped out these Metal Extractors. And now this one's down. Or shut, yeah, now it's, it's gone. The scalp is taking care of it. Bit of a shame that wasn't really moved around, though. Like, that Mano 12 just was not paying attention. It's, oops. Really, like, you can tell that they're you're just looking at their mouse right now. They're, they are very singly focused on one part of the map or the other. They're right now managing to get a little bit of multitasking going, but I feel like they're not looking at the minimap. Assuming they even use a minimap. I mean, they could be one of those players that just zooms out all the way in order to see what's going on. And thus does not have an overview when they're zoomed in. Assuming they do zoom in. But yeah, unfortunately, they did not pay attention to this section up here, which I can see. There was a big battle here, but that would have been cool. At this point, though, Sparkles is able to take advantage of that, wipe out the Corsairs, save basically all but three metal extractors, get that territory under control, and now there's a bunch of reclaim, too. That's what? Another 500 metal reclaim? 300 metal reclaim. So yeah, Sparkles is doing fine. Mana 12 able to start rebuilding. They're managing to get, not so much rebuilding, able to sort of catch up. I mean, again, they're way behind economically. The main advantage here is that Manu 12 keeps going for Corsairs, and Sparkles did not go very hard on the on the scalpels. They're going primarily for the daggers. Do have some claymores, but claymores can only do so much. They're good, don't get me wrong, but they can only do so much, especially for their cost, and it's not the most reliable thing in the world. The daggers, of course, have to be just kept away, and that is, what, 880 of army value? What's the current army value, anyway? 880 out of 2200. So a third of the army is these daggers, which cannot really do anything because all the Corsairs are in play. So again, I expect some scalpels to be built up. Or lances. Lances work too, but you're seeing lance, scalpel, and a lot of daggers. I'm guessing Sparkle is considering going for something like this. I go along the side here and around the back and just wreck face. That's all I could think of. And clearly they tried to do it with a claymore just now, but yeah, all I can think of is dagger around the back. Do have a claymore around the back? Again, that is definitely a threat and see why Manu isn't really focusing on building too much around the back but this is not on water this is on land the claymore shouldn't have a huge advantage against that as it stands though Manu 12 definitely had in terms of overall firepower up front like especially effective firepower the daggers again cannot do anything the corsairs are wrecking everything Manu 12 winning on attrition if not by economy and at this point their economy has pretty much caught up 
And with Sparkles not being able to reclaim and losing a lot of the front lines here, most of this reclaim field is actually being taken by Manu12 inside of Sparkles half of the map. Of course, at this point, the Corsairs are destroyed at the point that they have to fall back. There are few remaining Corsairs must fall back, and at the same time, Claymores in the back are still causing some problems. But Sparkles will probably lose that Claymore to the Lotuses. The last shot comes in, fire, gets rid of a few more power plants, but Manu12 overall doing fine economically. Especially just with the Mariners up front, taking everything. I mean, seriously, that is kind of rude. It's working really well. That's what, another 1,000 metal? 1,200 metal reclaim. But yeah, that Manu12 can basically run that for pretty much the rest of the game at this point, because this is going to be the front line. And yeah, there are scalpels and, course, and claymores and such coming around the back, dealing some damage. I like the way that Sparkles is keeping Manu on their toes and keeping them from having all the attention in the front lines. But at this point, Manu12, they've taken the Northeast. They've taken this expansion here. They haven't taken the Geo Plant, but... At this point, they don't really need the energy. The overdrive would be nice, but they don't strictly need the energy. Not bad, though. I mean, actually, no, I take that back. They do need the energy. If they're reclaiming as much as they are, they will be needing the energy very shortly. As you can see right now, already, they're pushing against the energy limits. So I would like Mana 12 to actually build up a Geo Plant there, but I'm guessing they're going to be building up a bunch of Tidal Generators instead. Because, you know, that's what you do. At the same time, though, Mana 12 putting a huge amount of pressure on Sparkles. I'm not really sure what Sparkles could do from here. Again, the Corsair is going up north, coming in to take out basically everything that's been built up here. And if, though, if this goes down, that is it. And these Corsairs, they're just walks, they're waltzing right in. They don't even care. They don't care about the urchins. They don't care about anything exploding from the pylons. They are just going in and tearing everything apart. And yeah, sure, the lance in the front lines is causing some problems, but already the air switch from Mana 12, meaning that's not going to be an issue for long. Overall, Sparkles, I don't really see any options they have now. These Corsairs coming in and... Again, a little bit of attention not being paid here by Mana 12, but it's it's fine. Mana 12 people will be able to take out everything up here, and that will basically be it. Unless Sparkles is able to just, I guess maybe get a Shredder, take out some of these, some of these Ravens. Or not a Shredder, a I'm saying a Shredder, Flail. Get a Flail to take them out. That might work. And the Scalpels aren't a bad idea, but I really kind of wish Sparkles hadn't gone for daggers as hard as they did, because it's clear the Corsairs were the option. I know why the daggers were done. The daggers are done to help get rid of the sea wolves, but that's where the claymores come in. Like, claymore, scalpel, or maybe claymore, halberd, or can't, claymore, scalpel, halberd, probably would have been the way to go here. But I can see, again, daggers, they get rid of the sea wolves. They also get rid of the, they help get rid of the mistrels. They don't entirely do that. They're not micro, as we saw earlier. Probably micro, they don't do anything, but this is it. Mana 12 coming into the main base, and sparkles blowing everything up, throwing in the towel, and that is, that is game. Pretty even game, though. I mean, I do think that Sparkles did have a decent chance. It's just, I don't agree with having gone that hard on daggers. I can see why some daggers, it's a bit of a tough call. I still think shifting that to Claymore, like, sheesh, I don't know. Claymore, Scalpel, like, Scalpel have to get rid of the Corsairs. Claymore also helps and gets rid of Sea Wolves. The problem there, of course, would have been the Mistrals. Which the Claymore can kind of get rid of, but the Mistrals can kind of out-damage in a short span of time. So, it's a bit of a tough call. I mean, the Halberds, the nice thing with the Halberds is they can distract the Mistrals. Which is kind of why you go for Halberds a lot in hover matchups, just because they can distract anything your opponents try to do. It's great. Does a really good job there. Anyway, that was that. Gonna have another match. Possibly the only other match. We'll see. Not feeling too terrible, but I don't want to push it. Ugh. Like, it's not sore. It's just sort of that stiff feeling. Like, you know, you can't really push it too hard or else you're gonna feel sore. You're gonna regret it. So, yeah, that's sort of how I'm feeling right now. But anyway, we'll do one more. Gonna be a match between Firepluck and Izzeride on the new patch. Although, it's probably not going to change too much. I'm guessing we'll see some spiders, because it's the Living Lands. And Living Lands, we've seen spiders on quite a bit. So, yeah. That is one of the biggest... The only real gameplay change is that fleas are now not able to decloak as they start shooting. Basically, their decloak radius got increased, and the range got slightly decreased. So now, their range is less than their decloak radius. So something coming close to them, it still might get ambushed, but it's not like the fleas are going to be shooting as they decloak in the same way they used to. So I'm curious if we're going to see them used, but for now, we'll just go to a short break as we get the next match. So stay tuned. <laughs> 